Tonight on Connecticut's news station, police still searching over two decades later. We have the story of a 25 year old cold case and how loved ones are remembering the victim tonight. Plus, a dog is missing after a car was stolen with the dog inside. The family of the dog speaking out tonight as they search for answers. And the Super Bowl halftime show has its headliner. We'll have the latest on Usher's big announcement. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Carmen Chow. We begin on the weather watch. Today was pretty much a carbon copy of yesterday with showers and that fall chill in the air. Not exactly the best day to go to a fair, unfortunately, but will we see a dry stretch after tonight? Here's meteorologist Sam Sampieri. Hi, Sam. I am so sorry to report we're not going to see any dry stretch at all tonight or tomorrow as we continue to be plagued by what was tropical storm Ophelia. So what we can expect now is steady rain overnight into tomorrow, uh, at least through midday, one to two plus inches possible. I had a chance to look at some brand new data and there could be some parts of the state could see upwards of three inches of rain. There is potential for a little bit of flooding chilly but the breezes will not cause any wind damage. We've been talking about that. Let's take a look at that wind out of the north and northeast, averaging 15 uh, miles per hour or so with some higher gusts going on. And we have those temperatures in the 50s and lower 60s. So let's take a look at this storm system. Think of this as a regular old nor'easter. Uh, this system is just slowed down and it's spinning moisture. And look what's going on right here. And we're starting to get into some of this moisture. A lot of it is going to happen in central western Connecticut before it overspreads the area. Notice how we're getting just a couple of showers, but it's steadier and heavier here. We have some more rain moving up here and you can see that that's the case here. So the next 12 hours expect raining and unfortunately I think tomorrow morning's commute is going to be wet and slick with uh, ro uh, wet roads and ponding of the water and that rain will taper off to showers but not till the afternoon and right now it looks like we won't dry out until we get to dinner time. So coming up, I will detail what you can expect. Already giving you a little preview preview. We will start to dry out. I'll detail how much rain when it all comes to an end and what you can expect as we head through the last week of September and the first full week of fall. Carmen. Sam, thank you. It's been 25 years since Agnes Zemluski was found shot to death at the MDC Reservoir in Farmington. In 2020, police made an arrest in this case, but the case is still cold. Fox 61's DeAndrea Turner spoke with a friend of Agnes today. She joins us in the studio with more. DeAndrea. Well, Carmen, on September 24th, 1998, Agnes was jogging at the MDC Reservoir when she was shot and killed. Now, while there's been a small breakthrough in this case, police, friends and family are still searching for the person who killed her. This is a place that I come um, for peace, for hope. And on the 25th anniversary of her friend's murder, Jolanta Emmons found herself at the Shrine of Lords in Litchfield to pray and hope for justice for Agnes Zumlinski, who was just 26 when she was murdered. Just a happy person, and she really didn't deserve to die so young. 25 years ago, on September 24th, 1998, Agnes was found shot to death at the MDC Reservoir in Farmington. 25 years later, police are still searching for the person that took her life. And every year, I hope this is going to be the year that the person that did this will come forward. You can't be at peace for doing this to Agnieszka. In 2020, there was a small breakthrough in the case. Police arrested 50-year-old Catherine Pierce of East Hartford in relation to the cold case. She's charged with hindering prosecution and interfering with an officer. Police say that Agnes and Pierce knew each other indirectly. While Agnes's friends and family still seek for answers on who pulled the trigger and in her life, Emmons says that this arrest is progress. It gives a little hope. Now the state has offered a $50,000 reward years ago when it's still valid for any information that will lead to the arrest and conviction for who killed Agnes. In the studio, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.
DeAndrea, thank you. New tonight, a man is in the hospital after police say he was shot. Harford police responded to the area of Mall Avenue just after 1.30 this afternoon. When officers arrived, police found a man in his 20s who was shot. He was transported to a nearby hospital, and we are told he is expected to be okay. The shooting remains under investigation. A family is searching for their dog after their car was stolen with the dog inside. Luna, a pit bull mix, was inside her owner Jeff Belmere's car last night when he got out to make a food delivery Saturday night. Belmere says that's when the alleged suspect, 19-year-old Malik Awa, stole the car. Police were able to track down the car and Awa, but not Luna. Police say Awa told officers he left the dog on the road after taking the car. Luna is an emotional support dog for Belmere's 15 year old daughter. We're both a mess. You know, I'm I feel guilty and you know, it's like a member of your family. It's not just a dog, you know, they're their family. So it's like one of your kids being missing. Awa was charged with a string of charges, including larceny of a motor vehicle and cruelty to animals. So if you see Luna, you are urged to call Middletown police. Developing tonight, a 19-year-old from Derby is in custody for their involvement in eight burglaries since the beginning of 2023. North Haven detectives say the teen Colin Howard was a part of a burglary crew that commit crimes across the state. Officials say Howard and others would steal cars from dealerships and target local businesses and ATMs. Another member of the burglary crew was arrested in August for their involvement. Today in Manchester, the ninth annual Believe 2085K kicked off in memory of East Hartford police officer Paul Buchanan. Buchanan struggled with depression and died by suicide in 2013. This event provides resources, training, and information on all aspects of first responder well being. This year, there were 250 runners who came out rain or shine. Participants included a mix of police officers, firefighters, and corrections officers. We spoke to Buchanan's wife on what this annual event means to her personally. Sadly, there is no other memorial out there for those that have lost their lives to suicide. So we want to remember them and never forget them. Um, it's about how they lived and, you know, the trauma that they experienced. They're only human underneath. Proceeds from today's race will help to fund education and training efforts to first responders and families in need. Make-A-Wish Connecticut held their 24th annual truck convoy in East Hartford this morning. Truck drivers, Wish Kids and their families and members with Make-A-Wish gathered at Rentschler Field. The Wish Kids were able to ride along in trucks in a parade route on I-84 and I-384. It was a carnival-like celebration with prize drawings and food trucks. 100% of the proceeds are coming to Make-A-Wish Connecticut to help make wishes come true for kids in Connecticut who are fighting critical illnesses. In total, Make-A-Wish Connecticut has granted more than 3,800 wishes to local children. Millions of people across the world are observing the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur or Day of Atonement, which began tonight at sundown. It is considered the most important holiday in the Jewish faith. According to Jewish tradition, it is on Yom Kippur that God decides each person's fate, so people make amends and ask forgiveness for sins committed during the past year. The holiday is observed with a fast that lasts until tomorrow evening. We have much more.